Namaskar. Cricket, that one thing that I never seem to get enough of. So, those of you who've been writing by the way of comments that I don't know enough about cricket, that I should not uh, be commenting on cricket, can you please look at what has been happening since the India-England series and now the team selections under the new coach? Will you at least now accept that whatever I'm saying has a fair amount of truth in it? If you still believe that what I'm saying is not right or that I don't know enough about cricket, I would urge you to read my book, Who Painted My Last Trend? Because as they say, history repeats itself. And in fact, as it's being played out now, it is repeating itself one more time. Now, let's take a quick look at the T20 team for India versus New Zealand. The first match is going to be starting in just days from now. The first match, what they did, the Indian team, uh, they dropped Hardik Pandya and Varun Chakravarti. And I believe both of them are hurt. Although, again, they have not given a list of players, their injury, their status, and where things stand as far as uh, their return is concerned. I would like to know, for example, and I'm sure many cricket lovers would like to know, what is the status of injury on Washington Sundar? He's a left-handed batsman, right-handed bowler, a great combination, um, a great talent. T. Natarajan, left-handed, uh, ODI, and in fact, he even played in tests in Australia. So he's, he's, uh, he's another exciting talent. What is the status of injury? Of, of his injury and when is he uh, going to return. I mean, I want to know the technical term for what their injury is because many of us who are professionals can actually tell how long it will take for someone to return from a particular type of injury. It's pretty easy. Uh, a, a broken uh, finger uh, is, is going to be six weeks. Uh, an ACL tear, on the other hand, could be six months. So all these things are important. I think that transparency that I've been urging should be there and I'm hoping that under Rahul Dravid that there will be more of that transparency factor. So Rohit Sharma is going to be leading India in the T20 leg and then he's going to be rested. As far as the test team is concerned, I believe that, this is personal opinion of course, this is the last chance for Ajinkya Rahane to come good. They have given him way too many chances to come good at the highest level and he has been, let's say, disappointing. In fact, uh, he, that he's even playing is, is an amazing thing, in my opinion. They should have dropped him from the Test 11, let him go back to uh, Ranji level, rediscover his uh, batting mojo, and then come knocking on the door. He's actually 32 or 33 now, no spring chicken, so he needs to understand that, uh, you know, being at the top, at the pinnacle of the game, uh, requires a lot more in terms of contributions. So that's my limited point as far as Ajinkya Rahane is concerned. And as far as the playing 11 for the first test is concerned, I have a, a selection. And again, you may agree with me or you may not agree with me, but I'm going to tell you who I think should be playing the first test match. In my uh, book, Agarwal, Mayank Agarwal and Shubman Gill should be opening. Cheteshwar Pujara, of course, at number three. And number four, I'd like to see K.L. Rahul. I believe he represents the future of Indian cricket and that he should be playing in test matches at the position that is best suited for the best batsman of the team, which is number four. Then uh, Rahane, of course. And in number six, I'd like to see Shreyas Iyer come in. I would like to see Shreyas Iyer earn a debut in India. And then, of course, he should be traveling to South Africa. You would have to see some of his one day uh, or uh, first class matches to see how seamlessly he accelerates once he crosses 50 or 60. He's a treat to watch when he's in full flow. Then, of course, uh, Ridhiman Saha as the wicketkeeper and Ashwin, Jadeja, Umesh Yadav and Mohammad Siraj. I'm only picking for four bowlers. There's a reason for that in Indian wickets where typically the, the bounce is low and slow and the ball spins. I would like, I think that a four bowler team is enough to get New Zealand out twice. This is just my opinion, of course. And, and at best, what you may see is either Mayank Agarwal or uh, Shreyas Iyer dropped for another bowler. This is my take. And again, I'd like to see all the test 
bowlers match at least 138 to 140 uh, clicks that's that's a must india needs to have that fast bowling talent otherwise you know uh, at test level uh, india needs to really make sure that those who are capable of producing consistent speeds of 140 plus are the ones who are playing these matches now let's take a look at the india a team that is going to be touring south africa as, of, as always, there was a surprise. Initially, there were 14 players announced. Then they tagged Hanuma Vihari into that, saying that he deserves a chance or that he might be required to represent India and play in South Africa. Thereby, he should also be, therefore, he should also be going. I don't buy this. I don't think Hanuma Vihari is, uh, he's got enough chances. Sure, he saved one test, but then so did Ravichandra Nashwin. And then he was a man of the series for the next series against England. And where did that uh, in India? And where did that take him? He was dropped for all the tests in England. So this whims and fancies of the selectors, the, the then captain and the then coach, I am fed up with it. It's my uh, read that in this particular selection, it reflects more the will of Amit Shah rather than Sharad Pawar and the coterie that surrounds the clique that is then this clique has uh, you know, politicians from all parties by the way this is again my opinion you can agree with me you can disagree with me you can send in your comments as to why what you stand you, my stand is wrong and your stand is right i'm happy to read all these things and respond to you okay let's take a look at the india a team who's the captain priyank panchal have you heard of him well i have not i had to look him up on espn crick info 31 years old all-rounder has done yeoman service for Gujarat and in fact Gujarat if you remember has been winning Ranji Trophy titles so under that uh, I think it is a little bit of a late award, a reward for a person who has been a very good player very good team player so Parthiv Panchal is a captain he's 31 years old some may say that it may be a little bit uh, uh, too old for him to get into test matches but in my opinion if somebody is fit Age is just a number. If he can prove himself in South Africa, I see no reason why he should not be also touring with the test side. Next is another interesting player, Arzan Nagwaswala. Again from Gujarat. This guy is uh, left fast medium. I believe he's about 23 or 24 years old, somewhere in the 20s. Okay, and, and again, he is uh, he has won some games for Gujarat. Let's see how well he performs. The most important thing is he brings variety in the form of left fast medium for the bowling attack. So let's let's see how he plays. Now, the other interesting inclusions in in my opinion are uh, that of Umran Malik, who impressed in IPL with speeds of about 100. And 50 clicks 150 kilometers per hour and 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 that definitely means that he has what it takes to bowl at that speed however t20 is four overs you can give in your all now he is being asked to play in a matches which are four day affairs where you may have to bowl 15 overs per innings and we'll have to see how well he's able to maintain that speed at that 150 K and 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 sustain the 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 not only the speed but also accuracy because if he can umran malik can be the next fast bowling sensation that india is looking for remember uh, pakistan surprised india with three fast bowlers they were not medium pacers they were not fast medium they were fast and and that is very important and and um, perhaps that was one of the reasons why india couldn't take uh, much chances in fact even in the new zealand team all three saudi bolt and milne all are in the upper 130s and above and and they are master craftsmen so my point here is india never were in the picture in the t20 the selection of the 15 itself was wrong and somehow because there was this uh, cancelled test in england then ipl that somehow people didn't quite see what was the flaw in the team selection in fact they were also going gaga over uh, ms Dhoni being the team mentor one wonders what exactly did he achieve in my opinion zero but anyway this is just my opinion uh, a mentor could have brought them sense of calm but where was that sense of calm when they had to go and perform against pakistan look at the way matthew wade took shaheen afridi three back-to-back -back sixes and god knows how many more if that over had continued so the thing is that there is special reads required 
if you are representing the country you have to give your best you have to shut everything else out doesn't matter uh, like uh, one Sauro Ganguly mentioned that a, full, a half volley is a half volley it doesn't matter whether you are playing at the Lords or in Kolkata or or in a gully cricket match so the, the the takeaway here is we need to see how well this India A team perform in South Africa certainly there are some other surprise inclusions it's it's good to see Devdat Padikal being in there Ishan Porel and Navdeep Saini is also there Saurabh Kumar again a player that I had to look it up, look up. he's an off spinner coming through the ranks. Sarfraz Khan, Saurabh is 28 years old, a little bit older, but I think it's okay. Like I said, age is just a number. Sarfraz Khan from Mumbai, another exciting right-handed uh, middle order. Baba Aparajit is going. I hope he plays all these games because he really, really deserved more uh, recognition than what Hanumu Vihari did because both of them played in under-19, represented India. In fact, three players represented India. One of them, Unmuk Chand, was the captain of the team and was, was identified as a talent who could go play for India in the test matches by someone no less than Ian Chappell. But Unmuk Chand never got that recognition. Poor guy now evidently has migrated and, and one knows, uh, one, one doesn't know when he'll even play for any country. But Unmukhtan never got his chance. And Baba Aparajit played some crucial knocks in those under 19s. Uh, in fact, the match against Pakistan was a humdinger, and it was his, his knock that helped India get across the line. But Hanuma Vihari, extremely lucky guy, all I can say. And, and he made it through. He played the test matches at, for a reasonable amount of time, somehow managing to play there. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying he's not talented or anything like that. But for the number of tests he played, he only had, I think, one test century. I think there should be more, in my, in my opinion. If you're going and playing at the test level and you've been identified as a proper batsman, you need to have more centuries under your belt. Otherwise, you know, you have to move, uh, step aside for somebody else to come in. So Baba Aparajit, 27 years old, a little bit on the late side in case he makes it to the Indian cricket team, but he is a genuine off spinner and he's a genuine number three bat. He could be someone who could be taking on, taking over from Cheteshwar Pujara should he get injured or something like that. My opinion again. Other people in the, the A team that I'd like to see excited, uh, Devdat Padikal, 21 years old, very, very exciting talent, has proven himself in IPL. So we'll see how he plays. Um, Krishnappa Gautam, again, a little bit older, 33 years old. Uh, we have to see, he's again an all-rounder. And uh, uh, I guess Upendra Yadav is the wicketkeeper for that. And interestingly enough, they only chose one wicketkeeper. So we don't know what will happen if that wicketkeeper gets injured during that India A series in South Africa. Now, as I said, I'd like the board to also have a routine status update on those players who could have played at the highest level, uh, play, for example, playing for India, um, provided they were fit or they could have been considered for selection. I'd like the, the, the board to have, a, you know, accurate and fair display of the name of the player, what injury he is suffering from, and uh, expected date of return. This would really help people understand that the selection process was a fair one, because in my opinion, I'm still surprised that Kamlesh Nagarkoti and Shivam Mavi, if they were fit, they should have been on that India A team because these are players who are capable of scoring or generating 150 Ks per hour consistently. So why they are not being played? I have no idea. Are they injured? I have no idea. When are they expected to return? I have no idea. I'm sure many of you, the viewers also want to know. So I would like to see that kind of a transparency emerge from the Indian cricket team. Thanks for watching. Do like, share and subscribe to the P Guru's channel. Namaskar.